I'm so sorry. Do I stay out of the cold open? Oh yeah, it, it'll. It's a written intro. Oh, perfect, awesome. Yeah. It's so professional. Uh, I mean, what you're about <laughs> to hear, you're gonna be like, okay, no, they're not. Uh, <laughs> okay. Today on the tarmac, we learned that if you kiss a beauty, she might like it, but if you kiss a sleeping beauty, well. She'll help you hunt an extraterrestrial chicken giant. My name is James. I'm Nicole. <laughs> and this is the final episode of 2024's Kaiju Icon here on Mostly, Mostly Speaking Sentai. Hee <laughs> Oh no, I forgot that I don't have a hee hee hee. Give me a one word suggestion. Oh, um... Cat. Okay, cat. Oh, shoot. There's too much. There's too much. Shark. Oh, shark. <laughs> yes, guys. Like I said, my name is James, and my eyes are that of a shark, <laughs> a.k.a. that of a living doll. They look. That's the difference between, like, oh, you just have doll's eyes. If they move, that those are living doll that's eyes. That's a living doll, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Imagine that. You're in a home and then there's a bunch of dolls and one of their eyes starts moving. Yeah. And then you're like, um, my face is up here, babe. We, well, you know, they, <laughs> they do make dolls with the moving eyes. Yeah, but that's when you like rock them. Yeah. And sock them. If you were to punch one of those dolls, their eyes would move. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you have you're just correct. a dainty one. A dainty punch? Yeah. I guess you can talk. Okay, well, what I just heard, yeah. uh, it, I, I felt like how I assume my grandpa felt when I told him about Nintendogs. Okay. It just sort of staring at me like, huh? rock a sack a bop with the doll's eyes? What the, <laughs> the hell are you talking about? But I'm glad to hear your beautiful voices and to be here today. Yes. Hey, guys, we have on today... Uh, one of my, I, my, it might be my favorite, of all the podcasts I edit, it might be my favorite. Just because, like, it's about the shit I like and the 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 goddamn, ge not guests, I keep wanting to say guests. Also, hey, it's Nicole the Bricks Jacus. I didn't formally introduce my co-host. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, the hosts of According to an Idiot are two of my favorite people. And today we got oh. one of them. It's Jeremy. Hello. Howdy. P pleasure to be here. Wow, it's so exciting. You do this. Like, you, why are you oh, so I nervous? Don't, but it's your, it's your show. <laughs> no, I don't want to. Uh -uh. wanna... It's the guest show. I, it's I, the guest show. It's crazy how, like, more than 200 episodes in, I have to tell people that. I just <laughs> thought it was assumed. Assumed? No, man, I don't, don't want to get in the way. No. Um, yeah. You so are the way. So excited. Thank you. Finally, someone <laughs> understands. Um, I'm so excited. So what movies have you guys talked about so far? It's on this year's, we did Power Rangers 2017 because we did the two previous Power Rangers, the two previous years with Rob of Tokyo Lives, then Pacific Rim with Damon, which we'd never seen it before in that movie, Rips, mm -hmm. and then Rebirth of Mothra 2 because like Rob, we've just been doing every single year Mothra movies with R2 Shelby 2. Mm. So, just a quick thing. Power Rangers 2017. Yeah. I grew up watching Power Rangers, not enough to, like, know it or remember it specifically. I remember the toys. I remember the fights, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Watching Power Rangers 2017, the, the main bad guy is Rotten Rita. Oh, Rita Repulsa. R Rita Repulsa. Why not Rotten Rita? Um, but I remember watching that movie being like, I love Power Rangers. This would be great. Remember none of it. Mm -hmm. There's a scene in the beginning when Rita Repulsa. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, no, it's a rap and Ronnie, Rodney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, these that. rages He's don't give me respect. respect. No, no respect at all. Um, uh, so there's a scene where it's like the past and before Brian Cranston becomes... Oh, Zordon. Zordon. He's like an irregular alien man who looks like Brian Cranston. And he's talking to Rita Repulsa and, or Repulso. 
Uh, real quick, how you're throwing to this is exactly Steve from Blue's Clues trying to do that. And it's your handy dandy notebook. And that notebook. gets your second <laughs> clue. Well, I, need, I need some help here. Um, but I just have this, this just seared in my memory. You see alien Brian Cranston in the, you know, the, 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 the prologue to the movie. Mm-hmm. He's the alien. The Rita's whatever. He's speaking his alien language. Yeah. And he just goes like, Elaktu Borto Ikalako Boto Rita. <laughs> and yes. I love it. I lost yeah. it. I was like, I'm going to love this movie. Did you? Uh, you know what? I thought it was pretty okay. Yeah, same. I, I think yeah, it's a, like, a perfect three star movie. Yeah. Surprised there was no sequels. Oh, yeah. There, there's a whole mess of bullshit behind that. Yeah. It also, I think, like, pr- probably just broke even. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. You want to know what's a big blockbuster? Yeah, but Nicole, you want to know what's breaking even t- today? Um, your pants. No, a whole bunch of airplanes when they get ripped open by giant claws. Yeah. yeah. So before we started recording, Jeremy, you said like this movie means something to you. Um, yes. And that may have been an overstatement. It, it, it was one of the first, um, I can say this and I, th- this is, if you're the police, this is a lie. If you're not the police, this is the truth. It was the first movie I watched when I was high as a teenager. Whoa. Hell yeah. I thought you were going to say like, I dubbed on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is a wild one to get stoned to and get high or to get stoned and watch. Yeah, it was it was very confusing. I, when I was a teenager, I liked to watch Turner Classic movies. Oh, okay. And this was on around Halloween time one year. Hell yeah! And um, I thought I thought I was really cool. I'm like, you know, I'm not I'm not like listening to like music or like going to the movie theater. I'm or whatever. not like other girls. I watch <laughs> Turner like, Classic movies. I'm not like other girls. Um, <laughs> I am watching Turner Classic movies, and this movie was crazy to watch high. Um, and I had not watched it again until you had approached me saying, hey, want to watch a uh, kaiju movie, a big monster movie for this thing? And I'm like, I know a big monster and his name is the Giant Claw. Hell yeah. When after watching, I was like, yeah, it makes sense that Jeremy chose this movie. <laughs> yeah. It's and a now big that, pile of shit. Uh, no, I think it's fantastic, but... Uh, Oh, wait, no, speaking of Big Pile of Shits, you talked about it on According to an Idiot last year. Have you watched any of Milf Manor 2? No, but I've I listened to a podcast, a culture podcast, where they talk about TV shows, and I've heard it's a bit of a letdown. Oh, no, I think... Uh, you're like we're it? obsessed with it's it. It's so much better really? because it's not gross. Yeah, it's, well, that's what I heard. Well, the people I was listening to, they they said it was worse off for that. Oh, no, I, the all of the men and the boys are little sweethearts, at least in the beginning. Now they're c- getting oh. a little bit competitive. But in mm-hmm. the beginning, they it's just so delightful because it's the fathers and the sons. And they, mm-hmm. mo- for the most part, all of them are like, yeah, my dad's my best friend. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I should check it out. Do it. Yeah. The first season was like, uh, Re- like Rita Sodom Repulsive. And, Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, Rita Repulsive. Um, and like the Milf Manor season one was like, if there was a reason for God to smite the earth, uh-huh. it'd be like, he actually saw Milf Manor season one. <laughs> it's like, what have you done with my creations? You've created this mess. Accidentally saw Milf Manor. Yeah. I, I what no, I think it's a case where he has like an assistant report back to like atrocities and then mm-hmm. he says like, Oh yeah, and they started this game show where like moms and their sons are dating like within the same pool and they have to like rub the sons down blindfolded to figure out what they are. And then God's like, no, they're not. And he's like, no, yeah, I have the feed right here. And he's like, they're getting okay. paid for this. And, and he's like, okay, g- give it here. Give it. Oh my God. You're right. Oh shoot. I think it is time. <laughs> it's time to reset the clock. But yeah, man, this movie rules. Uh, yeah. uh, do you want to get into it? Absolutely, yeah. I have some loose notes that I 
I made while watching it. Um, but do you? Well, how would you define the plot of this? The plot of it's like just bullet points. A breakneck speed, got to get it done. Oh wait, you, oh in bullet points, you want me? I thought you were like yeah, in the grand James. schemes <laughs> uh, to, to, to describe the plot, not is, the pace of the plot. Okay, like describe it to me. It's brisk, guys. It is. It's very. It's very. It's like what an hour and fifteen 12 minutes. Hour fifteen. Yeah, yeah which it's super hey, fast. That might be the golden standard for Kaiju Lycon because yeah. the last two movies we watched were over two hours long. Yeah. If this was two hours, it would be insufferable. Uh-huh. I read about the director. Producers loved him because they were like, he knows how to stretch a budget. <laughs> yeah, very and which is very clear from watching this. Oh yeah. Especially because of the the what's not alien, the chicken thing. None of mm -hmm. the actors knew what it was going to look like. And he spent, I think, the equivalent of $300 in today money on a budget special effects place in Mexico City. Yep. So, like, they didn't know what it was going to look like until they got the puppet. And then they shot the scenes. And at the premiere, I think the main actor, he... Uh, like the crowd, every single time the chicken came on, just laughed so right, hard. Yeah, I, saw, and I, saw, he, I read that, yeah. He ducked out of the screening because he's like, oh, I don't want anyone to see me here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know they were originally supposed to get, um, what's his name? Like Ray Harryhausen. Oh, Are you yeah, familiar yeah, with yeah. his work? He's like one of the original, like greatest stop motion art directors. Clash from, like, of the, the Titans, and dude. Clash of the Titans and several other. I've seen it in, in a film class I took. We watched a bunch of his movies. Mm -hmm. And for the time, like excellent, crazy work. Yeah. Um, and so to go from that potential to just like a studio somewhere in Mexico City is pretty crazy. And like, I also at the same time can't picture what a bird would look like in stop motion. I haven't seen that before. Oh, yeah. Um, so I feel like it would have been probably rough regardless, but what we got was like, not stop motion. Instead, it was just someone holding the strings going like this. Yeah. Of <laughs> a bug-eyed chicken. Like, it's something that Joan yes. Vasquez would have cocked up, concocted yeah, it looks, up. It, <laughs> cocked up, too. <laughs> um, I was cocked up watching this. Uh so like it looks like if Marty Feldman and if you were to genetically merge Marty Feldman and a vulture, who's Marty Feldman? Marty, have you seen Young Frankenstein? Uh, yes, a uh, well, very long e time ago. The actor who plays Igor. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, just bug-eyed, hook nose. It's like he has like a man's face. The best touch of it is the feathers on the head. Oh, ugh. Or it's like the strands of hair. Like, yes, honestly, yeah. I think if those weren't there, it wouldn't be as funny. Yeah, I think But every time it does this, it bounces. It bounces and, like, goes over one of its eyes. So I'm like, oh, it's in its emo phase. Yes. <laughs> like, why does it have human eyes? I. And that might be the biggest thing. It's like, it has these two bulgy eyes that are, you know, uh -huh. wall-eyed. That's weird. Both movies yesterday had the theme of people not doing CPR when they should have been doing CPR. <laughs> and this one is like Puppets the monster. with human eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got the shark eyes, though. Yeah. Doll's eyes. Yeah. Uh, which is the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We get the, in the beginning, there's promise here. Because there is this yeah. smoky globe just going around. I'm like, wow, there's budget that. in there. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's like, at once the world was large and unexplainable. And then by the end of the movie, like, they don't even do a good job of explaining what was happening. Like, the, I don't know if the science they use, and I guess we'll get to it, but like the science they use to explain the nature of the bird. I don't know if either of you are like physics people or. Well, uh, Jeremy, my note was. You're a scientist, right? <laughs> <laughs> Explain antimatter to us. I, I have absolutely. I, I today went back and rewatched the scene when they're in the lab and he's explaining things. Like when they are, and I don't, I feel like we're getting ahead of the story, but like at a certain point, the people, so this, the, the bird attacks, the main character, Mitch, who is hilarious, um, he eventually, he's just kind of carted around to different settings, military mm -hmm. settings, to observe people talking. 
And I love that when it comes time in the movie, like every monster movie, for a scientist to explain what happened and why it's, you know, what's happening, it's just a lab with this guy, pencil thin mustache, lab coat, and he's just pointing at like a wireframe model of an atom. Uh-huh. And he's going, and anyways, this is the proton. Anyways, the bird uses antimatter to not die. And it's like, can you explain, can we ease into this a little bit instead of just being like, this is, uh, the protons are protons and this and also big scary eagle, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> born a thousand years ago in a galaxy we can't see. Uh, see, I think because I've been reading a lot of multiverse comic books lately, I'm like, yeah, this all makes sense. It's like how the Batman who laughs came to be in, the, you know, the Batman who we know is Batman's reality. Yeah. No, see, I would argue that it's because we've watched so much mystery science theater that we're just oh. like used to this kind yeah. of shit. <laughs> right, right. And it's like, oh yeah. yeah, have they done this movie? It's I'd possible. Be su- I'd be surprised if they hadn't. Yeah. Because also the print of this movie is so amazing that it yeah. sometimes looks like it was filmed digitally and then just mm-hmm. like made like today. And just yeah. made to look like it's old. Yeah. Yeah. But whoever preserves these. With, with, with film, you can get like this crispness that, this crispness that like is just wild. Yeah. And if you're one, watching It's a Wonderful Life, you're also getting that Christmas. <laughs> then that's wild. Uh huh. Mm hmm. So, uh, what, what was this? What did I, wow, James, you, oh, okay, yes, I know. They have, we are introduced to some scientists, I think in like Alaska or something. They're like far north, right? Mm -hmm. At the beginning? Yeah. They're over the North Pole, I thought. Oh, okay, awesome. Or near the North Pole? They are, oh, shoot, I know what my intro, I wanted to make my intro about uh, someone that happens later, but uh, they're... They're talking about their fancy equipment and their fancy equipment. They say that literally they say our fancy equipment can detect rain clouds and homing pigeons. And then, <laughs> then I was like, and what else? Like what? What? It's so yeah. specific. Just those two things. <laughs> uh, some of the, some of like the best, like I've made notes of several lines in this that I just loved. Because, like, at some point, I know I read it down somewhere. Uh, some of the things that Mitch says is like, okay, so there's a scene where I think it's after they're they're in some general's office, and they're saying like, well, Mitch, you know, we had two other pilots who saw this bird, and they're both dead, which leaves you know you're the only person alive who's seen this bird. And then Mitch says, well, that makes me chief and chief cook and bottle washer in a one man bird watching society. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, he was witty. Like, dude, this dude talked so long. Like, he would say, he'd either just drink or he would say, like, the longest sentence in the world. Yeah, that's what they did back then. They I'd drank and it. said long they sentences. Had, they had the time to. Yeah, there wasn't yeah. Facebook. Yeah. That's there right. wasn't Pornhub.com. They didn't have TikTok. <laughs> oh, Everything's 10 mouths. seconds long. They didn't have methamphetamines. <laughs> They did, I think, at that point. Oh, damn it. Shit. World War II, they definitely had those. Why wasn't everyone hopped up on methamphetamines back then? They had nothing else to do. (laughs) That was for the soldiers. Okay. They're just like baning, you know, with a venom, but it's methamphetamine. (laughs) Yeah, Mm. just in their veins. Yeah. That would be a cool dystopian future, like when that came to be, like people just started baning it. People are doing that now. Okay. Yeah. With what right drugs? So I think methamphetamines. <laughs> okay. Amphetamines. The amphetamine right. family. Hell yeah. You know, quickest way in. I'd do it with like mushrooms. I've never done mushrooms. That, that sounds scary. Oh no, mushrooms rule, dude. You should check them out. <laughs> I don't know. No, my friend man. took him once and he just cried. Oh, pff, he's probably a little bitch. <laughs> oh my I'm God. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's kind. Of, he's kind of a bitch. Okay, hell yeah. He's a re- he's a reformed. 
<laughs> he's a reformed like bitch. Face when he's, you're like, he's kind of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> See, you guys got to be listening to uh, or hop on the Patreon, according to an idiot. Then you can see that yeah. face of his. Yeah. Damn. Whoa, now he's voguing. Oh, no. Too fast, he, too fast. He vogues too, too fast. Too fast. Oh, no. Um, we find out now that, like, he's not this Mitch man is not a pilot. And how they mention it, he's like, he's zipping everywhere. He doesn't play by the rules because Mitch is an electronics engineer. <laughs> he's a That's rebel. Right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like the military guy's like, God damn it. If you worked for me, I'd fire you, but you're too good. And he's just like yeah. some contract engineer that's paid to... He does fly planes. Yeah. Just, that's just not his main thing. Uh-uh. That's a hobby. Or like, it's just like to do medical or not medical, electrical engineer stuff. Does he need, what is that? Maybe to test it. I don't know. Oh, oh yes. yeah. because Oh yeah. He makes fucking inventions, James. He does it at the end. Yeah, yeah he does. And like explodes himself at one point. Oh yeah. But that was Quite intentional. Severely. Yeah, and it saved the day. And he's like, what are you guys talking about? I blew myself up. That's what I wanted to. And they're like, huh? Yeah. He's you like, idiots. that means it works. <laughs> yeah. I am the bird. I, I love the pace of this movie because it's like each scene is like, okay, uh, that thing you thought was going to take a while to resolve. No, no, no. We're doing it in the next scene. <laughs> Um, I also love the character of Pierre. Is it Pierre? The 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 yeah Pierre the Can the French Canadian farmer who rescues them from the yeah. their initial down crash. Uh huh. Um, that character should have been like a throwaway, and like he pretty much is. Uh -huh. They only use him to be tortured. Yeah. So like he saves them. He takes them back to his homestead. And while they wait for the authorities to come and retrieve them to get them on a plane to where they need to be, Pierre, like, feeds them whiskey or something or wine. Oh, some yeah. Some sort of liquor. And, like, they're talking about stuff, whatever. And I, that's when you get this perfect scene, which this movie does several times, which I love in old movies, is when in order to let the audience know what the phone conversation is, the person <laughs> talking to the phone just repeats everything that they're being told as a question. Uh -huh. Where it's like, nonsense. A, a hoax. A lie. You're canceling the investigation. And then he starts yelling at the general. Yeah. And in that scene when he's yelling at the general being like, you think I'm some sort of, you think he says jackass, which I was surprised to hear. Yeah. In 1957. Um, is it, what's it, Sally? I, it's something. His his love interest or like the stranger who he kisses while she's sleeping. Uh-huh. Uh, she, as he's getting angry, she instinctively just pushes the whiskey into his mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he, and he calms down. And he's like, thank you. And then continues calmly with the general. <laughs> and I, I love that Mitch's only medicine is whiskey. <laughs> um, but yeah, back to Pierre. When Pierre, um, he goes outside in the storm. We hear that shriek and we hear the lightning strike. And we find him in the street. And he's been struck down by what he calls uh, La, 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 La It's like La Cacania. It's some like French word. Yeah. It's like a, a, the legend of this giant bird. And so he's been struck by it. They bring him inside and he's hysterical. He's like crying. And then out of nowhere, Sally goes, oh, yes, La Cacania. That's an old uh, French Canadian myth about a terror bird who flies down from the sky. Uh -huh. Large, terrifying bird. And then Mitch goes, yes, I have a slight memory of the story as well. <laughs> it's like. Where have you heard this? You're what? <laughs> I thought it was funny that they're like, yeah, it's a French Canadian myth. Yeah. 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 That rich, that rich culture. Which they said, like, if you see the bird, you die. But I wrote down, you see bird, you be dirt. <laughs> That's a good tattoo, actually. Let's ink it up, Nicole, when we're in Vegas. No. See bird, be dirt. Um, I do love how that is conveyed where, like, the police comes in. And Pierre is still crying, like in French, and the police goes, crying "Ah, yes, in I." French. <laughs> <laughs> the police comes in, and the police is like, "Ah, yes, I too have heard of that legend." And he goes, uh, "The if you if you see that bird, not only are you injured, but you're to die soon after." 
as if Pierre isn't already panicking. Uh-huh. Just like, he'll die soon as well, which he doesn't until he does like an hour later. Yeah, which so, he, that dude should have survived. He was cool. Yeah, they bring him back just to kill him. I, which speaking of him, would you trust homemade alcohol from this dude? Honestly, maybe. Okay. Because like he looks, he was one of those guys like actors back then either looked like a handsome wallet or they looked like what Pierre looks like, which is like, like a, like a friendly hobo. Okay. You know, like he looks like a man who works in construction now. Oh, yeah. But back then, he was a movie star. Yeah. Or a, a character actor or whatever. So he's like, he's very rotund. He has a beard and he's, and he's, you know, he's French, but also totally sounds like he's doing like a Mexican accent or something. Yeah. Like the accent's all over the place. But like, I, when I see like a jolly man with a mysterious accent, I would assume that he makes good alcohol. I just feel like it would make one of my arms go numb for like a while. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's like I moonshine. Like, you go blind. I feel like Spanish and French are really similar. So it's, you know, it's, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think as a white man, I can say, yes, those cultures are very similar. It's basically the same. <laughs> the languages um, sound similar. It's like la versus le, you know? Yeah. A no I and agree. no? Come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's practically um, English, too. Pretty much. Oh, my God. Well, and We're by that, connected. yeah, and by that Christ. I mean English 2.0. Better, uh huh. Better. Oh wait, no, shoot! I just wanted to say that they're a derivative of the greatest language in the world, French. No, oh, that's the most romantic language. Spanish is also pretty romantic. Yeah, I guess yeah, you could Sp say so. Yeah, absolutely. They say, fire con Dios, and I'm like, hell yeah. I want to yes. kiss that guy. <laughs> He's a <laughs> oh, priest, yeah. but also wants to, like, punch people? Yes. From King but of the I, Hill. I, yeah, I love King of the Hill. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think they're both definitely like languages of love, you know, if said by the right person. The, this is my language of love. Oh, I love you so much, Nicole. Ooh. Okay. Can we kick him off of this? Is that yeah, like, go for it. Right? <laughs> just end you right now? Thank you. Thanks so much. Oh, just end me right now. That's what I used to say all the time as a teen. <laughs> uh, let's put up the number for the hotline right now. Uh, so, oh, speaking of numbers, they say, this is Zebra Love 7979. And I said, I'm Jampy Love 6969. <laughs> Uh, oh, when I said, like, how I love the pace was a specific line where the general was berating Mitch for saying, like, oh, you're making this up. You're a liar. Hold on. Wait. I have a phone call. Yes. Oh. So turns out, yeah, you guys, you guys aren't, <laughs> you guys are saying the truth. Yeah. Other people are doing it. And that's why I yeah. love the pace. Yes. Phones do, a, like, the heavy lifting in this movie. Uh-huh. There's a lot of, like, perfect phone calls. And some, again, they go, what's that? Huh? I was wrong? Ah. <laughs> and they and hang up and go, I was wrong. Problem solved. And back then, like, the, it, there's some heavy lifting for a phone. Because they were so heavy. Yes. They were made of also, solid lead. It does look better, too, in movies. Because they can they pick it up. Uh-huh. And then they can slam it down. Oh, yeah. Can't do know? that with a iSmart man phone. No, these Game Boy phones the kids have. Oh man, Nintendo. Nintendo go steal phones. my wallet. Am I right? <laughs> Nintendo, I guess. don't take all my money. There we go. There we go. Oh, Pokemon, go to the pole. <laughs> <laughs> man, that that thing never gets old. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, no wonder we lost that election. <laughs> God. God. Like, she's saying that dumb shit, and then he's saying, like, I, like it is, if you're like, hey, it's, tw it's like early 2000s, like him saying, like, grab him by the pussy. It's like, one of those is technically, like, just said in a vacuum cooler, but, <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, one's corny, and one, like, people can be like, he's edgy. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. Mm-hmm. Did, not to be political, but did you guys see the, the debate? No. No. Oh, don't. I, uh, <laughs> We've yeah, heard. I just. It's just. Yeah. It makes Pokemon Go to the polls look like Sonic the Hedgehog of the nineties. Oh, whoa! Just like it makes that look so badass. It's <laughs> like <laughs> it's it like so sad and lame. Shadow the Hedgehog with a gun. Oh yeah, fuck yeah! He'll get you. Yeah, that was Hillary. She was Shadow the Hedgehog in today's context. Yeah, man. The only the only thing to the oh, what's the goddamn saying? The only thing to fear is fear itself. Is shadow the Hedgehog with a gun. No, uh, the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a Shadow the Hedgehog with a gun. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'm so, like, if a bad guy saw, like, oh, Batman, he's so menacing. No, it's a real hedgehog, life size, as tall as you, and they have like kick-ass shoes on, nice gloves, and a gun, they'd piss mm-hmm. themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. They'd be like, my that's crazy right. uncle was right. They are doing some <laughs> bioengineering under Area 51. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You talk about that kind of stuff. Do you think they could make a, a Shadow the Hedgehog? Um, I don't know if we're there yet. I don't okay. know if we'll ever be there to get to make Shadow. It's kind of like a one and only. Okay, uh, I so think we could. I think right now we're just making like things that that don't make it to the public. We're just making like cow people. Okay, that we then execute before they reach sunlight. Oh yeah, because if they reach sunlight, they'll get big old hell birds and like they'll start mowing down adventurers. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, words out of my mouth. It's Diablo two, guys. <laughs> Got it. Exactly. There's a hidden level in Diablo 2 where you can like summon like this arena full of cows bipedal with hellbirds. Damn. Why Damn. not? Yeah. It came out of a meme of like people saying like to like, hey, your friends being like, yeah, there's a secret cow level. And it just fucking wasn't in the first game. So the mm-hmm. developers were like, we're going to oh. do it for this one. That's awesome. I love that. Uh huh. That's great. Just willing it into existence. Yeah. That's manifestation. Why does he, what's perfect, f- oh, thunderstorms, was that it? Perfect, mm-hmm. f- oh no, no, maybe it was the whiskey. Yeah, perfect for snake bites, thunderstorms, and storms disbelieve and- in generals. Yeah, yeah, I love that. He's, he's, those are another one, another long sentence by him that he uh-huh. just came up with. It's amazing. And also too, I know there's perfect, when they, when they leave um, Pierre, first of all, they leave Pierre's house. They get on that plane, and he references it in the intro. There's this. They're on the plane. Sally again? Is it Sally? Or, I think it's Sally. Sally is asleep. Typical like fifties movie moment. Sally's asleep, and Mitch just goes, "You know what? I've known this woman for roughly eighteen hours. I think I should lean over and kiss I'm her on the mouth while drunk. she's sleeping." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm still pretty fucked up. Um, and he leans <laughs> over and kisses her very passionately. Um, and the worst slash best part is that she wakes up and is like, "Not too bad." Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. I'm like, "Oh come on!" Like but it, then, it, it is a cool line for her to say, like it's badass. But it's the fact that she wasn't putting out those feelers to be like, "Hey." If you want to kiss me, kiss me while I'm asleep. Like, that's what I'm into. Yeah. That it's like he just got lucky that this worked, which means he will do it again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And also, it could have been a deleted scene. Oh, you know, yeah. But on the uh, car oh, right to the airport, where she's like, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, I, this, this UFO stuff aside, if you want to kiss me, you should wait till I'm asleep. Yeah. And then we get that scene. She grew up on Sleeping Beauty, and she's like, that's what I want a man to do to me. That's what love is. Uh Uh-huh. I'm Uh, unconscious. But he also, before kissing her, he's just smoking on a plane, which is always wild and crazy. And Mm -hmm. then, like, he has smoke breath. I guess everyone did back then, though. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I'm sure sure back then, every place smelled like cigarettes. Yeah. It was probably weird to smell a place that didn't smell like cigarettes. Yeah, you'd be like, what's up with these fucking hippies in here? <laughs> yeah, it's smell, yeah, these Mormons. Um, what, after they kiss, I'm still baffled by that weird exchange they have 
It's again, lickety split, lightning fast, like, eh, blah, blah, blah. and it's like baseball. Do you remember that? It's oh, like that. It's I like, don't ba- don't remember. I thought he was like looking at her maps. Well, so that's what inspires the maps because she says something about patterns and he goes oh. patterns. But she, I okay, I I pulled up the script to read it, so I'm it's on my Wowzers. <laughs> okay. Well, how, why? Okay, so because uh, I remember listening to this and being like, "What is this this dialogue?" Um, so they kiss. This is how you know his podcast papers flip in the background, and ours do not. Meaning he comes prepared. Yes, yeah, so they, they they get on they get on the plane, and he's uh, he kisses her. She wakes up, and then he goes, "The kiss you take is better than you give." And then um, she says, "The many faceted creature, a many faceted creature, this Mister McA- Mc- McAfee, McAfee, McAfee." And then uh, first engineer and pilot, and now lover and poet. And he goes, oh, the line of poetry was from Shakespeare. And she goes, I know, but where, where did that impulse come from? And he said, left field, maybe. I like baseball. Or maybe just sitting next to a pretty girl. That's enough in, in itself sometimes. And then um, she says, even sitting next to Mademoiselle Mathematician? Or, and he goes, and she goes, or should we stick to the baseball reference? There are, there are figures and there are figures. Um, and then he goes, inescapable logic, corny but true. You almost overwhelm me. And then she says, almost? And he said, well, let's finish the job. And they kiss again. And then they go, speaking of baseball in left field, and then uh, you make up your own rules. Who said that? Um, a friend of mine. He said, well, if he said that, he's no friend of mine. Sabotage. And then they, let's stick to baseball and stay instead. And they talk for baseball and other several things. And then she says, follow the patterns. First the minor leagues, then the major leagues. And then he goes, pattern patterns let me see that map and she gives him the map and he goes let's trace the patterns of where we spotted this thing and then it goes nowhere it goes nowhere and then they land and look at the patterns again it's the it's a spiral which is like that's when they determine which like also it's literally like a, a weird line and then he makes it a spiral yeah yeah um and then did that ever come into play like why the spiral formation was relevant do they, birds they then figure out like where it will go next and then okay, where it's like following that yeah. spiral. Yeah. But when you were start, I don't know if it's I'm, I'm stoned or that beginning dialogue you started reading. I was like, wow, that is so layered and so witty. This <laughs> whoever wrote this was fucking great. <laughs> I like the ways they just snap from one reference yes. to another yes. so well. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I mean, it is kind of like, which I think is why it stuck out in my head. Cause I'm like, oh wow. They're like, it's definitely just, it sounds like a man wrote it. Oh yeah. And it sounds like just two men talking to each other. And that's why I think it stuck in my head. Cause I'm like, this is like the same. It's like one man, neither of which I see on screen is talking through both of these characters. Um, no but, man, it's just, yeah. she's a guy's gal, you know, she's a guy's gal. She's from Montana. Yeah, Nicole, you're one of them guys, gals, right? She don't. She knows math. Like no. you? No. Oh, <laughs> uh, I gotta revoke. I th- we were gonna go duos and mathletes this year, but never mind. I mean, you can, but Damn. we'll lose. Oh, maybe you'll get better. Like it, you got to work that muscle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two yeah. plus two. Four. 80 times 2. 160. I see, man. That's the fundamentals. You're set. All right. Let's go. Let's go catch a bird. Let's win that grand prize of um, nachos. Oh, I'd love that. I thought you were going to say a championship, which is just a big old Sunday like in Rugrats. No. (laughs) Okay. Would you? Could you eat a big Sunday? No. Yeah. I don't think I could anymore. Yeah, I could. How many scoops of ice cream do you think you can house like tonight? <laughs> On, honestly, maybe two, <laughs> maybe two, <laughs> and, then I, and then I would be on the toilet for three hours. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Something. Something happened when I was like twenty-three. 
Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, I went from being like, oh, ice cream's great. So you just uh-huh. eat it sometimes to like ice cream. I have to be at home. I have to be ready. I have to take a, a dairy <laughs> pill. And that still won't save me. Yeah. I have to be ready. <laughs> I have to be ready and at home. Something safe and ha- comfortable. Something happened to me when I was like 29 where it just like made me – one, it was body dysmorphia of like, oh, I just ate so many calories. I'm a, I'm a fucking cow. Yeah. Uh, but it was also – it was so much sugar and dairy that like it upset my stomach, but also like made me vibrate. And mm-hmm. uh, like I used to uh, like ice cream was my everything. And then I just had to like cut it out completely. And I haven't had ice cream in like three years. Really? Yeah. I think like I noticed are, are what are your, you guys talk to your parents? Yeah. Okay, one, I have to ask one that now set because of it. most people I know don't. Um, but like, I, that's such a boomer thing is ice cream. Like my parents eat ice cream every night as like a end of the day thing while they watch TV. Uh, I used to. And like, I remember I was watching The Sopranos recently. And one of the things that Tony does, and Tony's like a boomer. And yeah. it's, it's filmed in the early 2000s. He's like 40 something then. Is like, he also, at the end of the day eats ice cream while watching tv hell yeah you know and like i've been over friends houses and like met their parents and their parents were like at the end of the day like cheating and enjoying some ice cream in front of the tv and i think it's because boomers are like the eternal kids where in the sense of like they have to always give themselves the things they couldn't get oh yeah from their from their parents so it's like oh ice cream all the time uh watching tv super late um stuff like that i also have just parents that do that so that might just be i might just just be talking about my parents right now <laughs> no i <laughs> i don't actually know no i i i know it like that happens yeah, and indulgent indulgent either you're not either or you're the opposite it's like keep everything from yourself or like hey man we didn't save money we're we need to retire but we can't let's just eat ice cream oh yeah and die oh or, man. or don't die because everyone's living so long oh god that's a dream to just yeah. It, it, like if I die. if I worked out all the time, I'd be like, yeah, fuck it. I'm eating ice cream every single day, and I'd be like, I'll work it off the next day. Man, that's the, that's the dream. Yes, to yes. be able to to eat ice cream but still have cum gutters. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm did, out. <laughs> did not did not expect the next word to involve cum hyphen gutters, but. You know what those are, though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the Vicious V, the Vicious V. Haven't talked about it in a while, but I got (laughs) them. Someday. I tell myself someday I will have cum gutters, but it's not happening. And no, man, it's easy to do. You do the one punch man workout and then you got them. Well, you know, like the way I see that now for myself, when I talk to myself about my personal fitness, is the same way that like... um, Girls talk to their friends who like have had a boyfriend for twenty years. Where it's like, if he wanted to, he would. Oh, like yeah. I say it to myself about working out. Where it's like, <laughs> Jeremy, if you wanted to, you would. And then I'm like, you're right. Wow. Yeah. The only reason that I still do it is because otherwise my body will hurt. <laughs> so I'm I getting have there. To. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting to where if I don't walk, my knees start cracking when I'm sitting down. Yeah, dude. I do it and my body does hurt. Getting them gains. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Chris <laughs> or no otherwise. No <laughs> you know Chris Gaines? No. I love Chris Gaines. Yeah, he's my favorite. Um, uh, what would you call that? Like um, Alter uh, ego. Alter ego. Alter ego. Yeah. Garth Brooks, Nicole, he became Chris Gaines for an album. Okay. He was rocking. He sure. truly was. Oh, yeah. Uh, th- when he, back to patterns, I just wrote down, that's not a pattern. That's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also love, there's several sight gags in this movie that, like, are only sight gags with, like, today's context of how corny they are. Like, um, when they're in the lab, and I think it's the second time they're in the lab, and it's when the when they're asking, like, okay, Doc, to the scientist, where did this bird come from? And he goes, 
well, this bird came from another. It's it's made of no element. They had like three feathers from the bird they were able to find from the wreckage. Wreckage, and they said, "We've studied these these feathers. This is the only surviving feather. It's made of no element we can find in the periodic table." And they go, and he goes like, and uh, we analyzed them all, which was expensive. And they say, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Well, we put our." Uh, yeah, we, we put the, the feathers through our electronic analyzers and then um, and they pan over to just a table with a bunch of scrap metal and broken springs and whatever, <laughs> like flying like these feathers were so extreme. They blew up our machines. <laughs> also, electronic analyzers like, huh? What? Well, before it used to be analog analyzers. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. Nicole, don't do that. Don't roll your little eye. Would it be cool if you could just roll one eye? Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> okay, don't roll your one eye. <laughs> You're like, I'm trying real hard to do it. Um, when they were talking about the the feather, they're like, it's a feather. It works like a feather. Looks like a feather. Tickles like a feather. <laughs> yeah. That means that part of the anal analysis was them tickling each other. Yeah, uh -huh. they tested you know? it. They go, <laughs> they do it on <laughs> Phil, and they're like, "Oh, I guess it's not a feather." And they're like, "Oh no, Phil's not ticklish." Yeah, <laughs> he got sh he got choked out in the war. He messed <laughs> up with his nerve yeah. endings. <laughs> he took shrapnel. <trapped. laughs> <laughs> this part when they're talking about antimatter was like some Fantastic Four shit. Because there is a Fantastic Four arc, like, in full circle, where it's just, like, like they go to an antimatter area, and they're like, our suits need to be antimatter so we can push through. And it's it's real wild. And, like, I don't understand, like, so it's, it's funny because this is, like, a typical, like, trying to be a blockbuster monster movie, whatever, like a popcorn flick. Mm -hmm. But then it's also really trying to put in this whole, like, science gobbledygook. Yeah. Which I'm, I'm sure at the time, I read in, I think it was when I was looking at the Wikipedia page for this. It was, not only was it inspired by, um, is it Rodan? Probably, yeah. Is that, yeah, the, the flying monster movie? Pterodactyl um, dude, yeah. Yeah, but also... Um, a recent article at the time about like um like physics like some breakthrough in like atoms and stuff okay. that was antimatter and so i just find it strange that like they would part of this movie is almost like a psa or like an advertisement for you know new science yeah and like there's no way like audiences in 1957 cared or, like, we're used to hearing words like that, mm -hmm. you know? And also, like, what was the what was the goal? Was it just to sound smart and be like, oh, I really, I'm immersed now. I believe this bird is real because they're using words that sound serious. Maybe they cited yes. a what's up. Because that's, that's what it is. Because I think the disconnect is just the the bird that we did actually get is so fucking goofy that yeah. you're just like <laughs> yeah, yeah, no yeah. this isn't no yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like if this bird actually looked cool uh -huh. and scary you just you'd be like yeah that's yeah absolutely yeah no, spot spot on right yeah it, which that, it would all pay off yeah and you're I, like this is just this is a goofy ass yeah. puppet <laughs> it's like you look at you look at that and you're like that's science yeah. <laughs> you know, like, what that's that's barely a child's uh, arts and crafts project. Yeah. No, yeah. But I bet if this was like, oh, it's a cool looking bird and it makes sense in this movie, I don't think this movie would have been like remembered. Why? Because then it's just like, oh, it's just like another uh, monster movie opposed to like, yeah, it's like wild science shit, but then like an even wilder designed chicken. I I think I you're probably right. I do think though, if they got Ray Harryhausen to do oh, like yeah. a cutting edge, like we've never seen feathers stop motion before. This was the first time we saw mm -hmm. feathers and stop motion. Like it it might have been legendary, you know, might have been, you know, crazy to see. But in the end, like it's the opposite. It's like it's it's so bad. It's not even it's not even so bad. It's good in certain mm -hmm. instances. Like 
When you see it destroying the Empire State Building and then the UN Building. Yeah. Like you saw in in King Kong, which is like 1930 something, mm-hmm. a much more compelling, realistic, believable destruction of the Empire State Building. Oh, yeah. So like, you know, 20 plus years have passed and it looks worse. So yeah. like, I think that's also part of it is like, there's, it's like, the story is okay. The story is boiler, boilerplate. And the effects are like so phoned in that even people in the fifties were like, that looks stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and like in the fifties, only what, only 40 years before that people were like running away from trains on movie screens because yeah. they thought they're going to hit. So like for them to be like, that's clearly toys. You did a really bad job. Yeah. Uh, so when you were talking about like if this were stop motion and like feathers were going about and if it looked beautiful, when uh, Squaresoft was promoting Final Fantasy Spirits Within, they would have been like, hey, the hair sims in our movie are to like – claymation and feathers from the giant claw like they would have yeah. been like oh yeah this was super ambitious but the guy the dude knew how to stretch a budget yeah did he though yeah, like, <laughs> uh, literally, literally literally he did because i then you can assume the budget was so small yeah yeah if this is him stretching it like i can't imagine what that was but i guess the guy who made this the your producer like something katzman yeah i think so um, yeah um, I guess he was known for like campy, ridiculous, like the the movie that this was promoted when it was in theaters. It was promoted with as a double feature with a movie called The Day the Earth Exploded. Oh yeah, which is like it's just the name itself. You're like that had a that had no budget. <laughs> the Day the Earth Exploded. You can just see like a model Earth going with a firecracker. Someone and, just a uh, paper mache globe and a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> That's and that was God's hand. Wow. Uh, no, guys, it's just one of those balloons that has the earth on it, like a globe shaped thing, and it's just someone blowing it up until it explodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that would be the cheapest one. Mm-hmm. This movie rips, though. Well, oh, I yeah, guess we got to watch more of this uh, Cats Man's movies. Yeah. Also, like, I want to add, too, there's this weird, like, tangent they went on um it's in the scene where pierre dies they're they're i can't remember if the, if the military found that there was a nest at one point they go to a nest yeah and they go all right guys the plan is go to every one of its nests and shoot the eggs which they do and they shoot it and like it's i thought a very gross scene where like they're shooting these eggs and they found this like gelatinous like jizz to like pour out of the eggs when they shoot at it and like it's this weird tangent that goes nowhere, doesn't work to solve anything. It's just them. Mm-hmm. And it's, I, and I felt like it was just an excuse to kill the French guy. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because he runs away. He goes like, oh, sacre bleu. He drops his gun, runs away. And you just see him running. And he's, you see him running from far away, which is like, okay, he's definitely going to get grabbed by the bird because he's uh-huh. far away. And then the bird comes down and he screams and whatever. And, um, and I felt like they were just trying to complete that circle because after that happens... I think it was after that happens, she goes, oh, it's like the legend says, he was marked for death. And Which it's is like, like, so are you marked for death then? Yeah, because we've all seen it now. Oh, you know, no. We've, this, all, we've all. It's like the ring. Oh, oh my God. Oh, man. This little chicken's going to crawl out like, you know, muddy hair in front of it yeah. because, you know, it has that <laughs> mohawk. Only hat. We see one eye, but it's not a wonky like Sadako's eye. And then it starts coming out and it's like, eh, eh. Mm-hmm. I think I think I could kill it. Oh, yeah. For like if it's, you know, TV size. Yeah, I feel like I could kill it very easily. And I feel like it would be an instinct. I don't even think I'd have to think like I wouldn't need any courage. I think I would just instinctively be like that needs to be killed. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> Obviously. That's what I'd see with Sadako. She crawls out. I'd go like, yeah, that thing needs to be killed. Just, yeah, got it. Um, was there an age for for either of you where, like, when you saw bugs, you're like, I have to kill it? Oh, always. The, t- truly, we were talking about this on the last episode. Yeah, like, there was a certain age where, like, bugs were always creepy to me. But I think I was, like, maybe my preteens or whatever. Maybe it was just a little bit of testosterone. I don't know what it was. But it went from being, like, ooh, somebody kill it to I have to find this and kill it if it goes out of view. 
Oh, I'm yeah. like, I'm not going to sleep until I pull apart every piece of furniture and just bash it with something. And yeah. at first I'm like, I'm like, oh, wow, shalom. I'm truly a man. Like, uh, like I have transformed into, I must protect the house. Uh -huh. But in reality, it's like, it's, I'm so afraid that I must smash it. Yeah. I, and that's what yeah. would happen with that for this bird. Yeah. But Just have to smash that. Yeah, exactly. Like, what if it was like insect size, a little bird running around with those eyes? <laughs> I think that that's almost scarier. Yeah. If it was like, like if I hadn't been close enough, I wouldn't have noticed what it was. Mm -hmm. But like the idea of like, I just happened to see that and notice that that's a whole like squishy bird with big eyes. And guess what? It loves warm places, it, like a little damp too. So there's just constantly trying to get in your ear. Oh I God. hate that. I don't, I don't even say that. I, at a certain point, <laughs> I like knew and I guess still know like what stink bugs smell like. Uh -huh. Yeah. You'd just be like, just, you know, getting in bed all comfy. And then I'm like, oh, there's one, there's one near me. There's one yeah. near me. I have to find it. But doesn't it just, does, don't they only stink after you've squashed it? That might secrete it's, something. It's, it smells stronger after you squash it. Okay. Maybe that's, maybe that's what it is. Cause I know like you squash it and it smells like cilantro. Oh, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you, if you like huff cilantro, you can kind of smell like a like stink bug, like a squished stink bug. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. I know what ladybugs smell like, and that's a disgusting smell. I'm sick of that smell. Uh-huh. I smell that, and I'm like, this. I hate this. this <laughs> as a kid, for some reason, I smelled a lot of ladybugs, and it just it pisses oh. me off. I'm like, ugh. Well, it's because my Nana, sorry, Nana, but she didn't, like, clean out the what do you call uh, the th fixture over the lighting a lighting fixture like a, li a light, light fixture yeah oh yeah the so like the basin yeah like so we would clean those out for her and it's just like that ladybug smell yeah, yeah well did yeah, you yeah. guys have it like our house at a certain point every year would just be fucking covered in ladybugs there was a season for ladybugs yeah yeah i'm sure there still is but and i, I have a hated it I have this memory that's followed me my entire life. Nobody can back it up. But like when I was a kid for a time, we had, my parents had a little dinky cottage in, in the thumb of Michigan. And um, I remember I was maybe like five or six, probably younger. And I remember in clear detail that it was raining ladybugs. Oh. Like enough to where we needed an umbrella because they were like, they were all over the place. Yeah. And like, I've, I've never been able to like have... Anybody be like, I remember that day, but I carry that with me my whole life being like, there were so many ladybugs flying around. We needed an umbrella. That's gross. And it smelled like that outside. I oh. think it was like, maybe it was like their breeding season or something, but it was like a, a whole brood of ladybugs had woken up and was by the lake and we had to fucking, you know, we we're getting pelted with them. Damn. Yeah, I would like come home from school and I would like put a hoodie on and like cinch it all the way and be like, run, 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 hold okay, your so, breath. Okay, okay. <laughs> get some validation. Like, yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to breathe any of these in. Ew. I hated it. Do you think that yeah. brood of ladybugs were all in like little snow suits, Nicole? Oh, that would be really cute, though. But it'd also be creepy because they're the brood. Yeah. <laughs> That movie's creepy, guys. Uh, someone says, like, would you two shut up? And they were like, no, we're saving lives. Yeah, yeah, and then the plane. Like, they're, when they're talking, that's when they're talking about baseball. Oh. And he goes, he goes, will you two stop talking? Some of us are trying to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Later on, when were, were you, was that your pen or were you actually puffing on something? <laughs> it's just a pen. <laughs> okay, yeah, I thought that was like a little vape thing. <laughs> uh, it's like they end up going on someone's private plane, their private jet, and I wrote down this would be Sally saying it. Oh, on your private planes, am I able to be kissed while I sleep? <laughs> She's into it. She keeps on saying that literally out loud. And when they were talking about like, it's a bird we've, 
we've done everything. We've used guns, bombs, drowning, big zaps. It's like Jason Voorhees in the ninth movie. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Yeah. What a keen eye you have. That's exactly that. Oh, it, the one of the got Mitch when he's like trying to like formulate something. He goes nest, eggs, other birds. <laughs> He should have said a snagglepuss even at the end. (laughs) Yeah, I love also like talk about some of the greatest, most like on the nose endings. So they finally shoot the bird down over the Atlantic and it as it's falling, you just see that final giant, the giant claw like coming, like sinking into the ocean. It just says the end. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of wanted it to like move before it like oh there's it'll come back. No, that's too much budget. Yeah, they didn't have the budget for to have a finger articulate. It yeah, was just, just one solid thing. It says, "Come here, big boy, and kiss me while I sleep." <laughs> <laughs> he was thinking about it. Uh, one of the guys is like, "We have the best. We have the might." We have weapons of the mightiest army, and I'm like, too bad it's 20 years too early for the KISS army, the mightiest of armies. (laughs) Oh, no. They're doing tours now as uh, as, uh, holograms. Holograms, yeah. That's that's cool. They finally did their last tour, which is like, guys, just like, KISS can be other people. Like, have it be young dudes, like, innovating, like... Playing off what you set. Wow, that's interesting. Le- Kiss Legacy. Yeah. I uh, I listen to Never Not Funny, and Jimmy Pardo is a huge Kiss fan. And I guess Kiss fans have been saying this for a while. Like, no, just like, really? pass this down to other people. That's a cool idea, actually. Yeah. Because they're all in face paint. Yeah, they could be. Uh, yeah, Kiss like could Warren. be anybody. Mm-hmm. Kiss yeah. could be. Kiss could be on a plane while you're sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> and, man, you got to kiss him, yeah. Because it's kiss. God damn it. Got to kiss. James, what were you saying? I'm from Montana. Okay. I'm I from love that. Montana. <laughs> I love that. He, like, looks at her. I'm from Montana. Did Which today, I think it would be Texas today. Te- today, they should say, I'm from Texas. Oh, yeah. To, like, you hey, know, like, I feel like I can get that down. isn't a thing anymore. I guess because I knew people who were from Montana, I'm like, yeah, like oh. they, they're like, they get down. They're ranchers and they, yeah, yeah. they shoot things. But like, I feel like now guns, if somebody pull out a gun and be like, I'm from Texas, people be like, oh, haha, funny. Yeah. Big American Texas. Did someone say, hey, daddy are you afraid of a Dumbo bird? No. <laughs> no, but uh, hold on, because... <laughs> One of the best uh, fucking lines of this movie is when they are in the, they're in the general's office. They're listening to when they finally find like, hey, we found where the bird is. Let's listen in. We can listen in to the fighter pilots. And the pilot goes, I have this written down. Holy Toledo. I've seen some, I've seen some mighty large chicken hawks back on the farm, but man, this baby takes the cake. And then the next pilot says before dying, honest to Pete, I'll never call my mother-in-law an old crow again. And then they just, they just get eaten alive by this yeah. Hell yeah. But I'm like, that's the most 50s, like, last words ever. Just uh-huh. holy, to say holy Toledo, <laughs> you know? Not holy fuck. It's holy Toledo. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, you are famous or infamous for loving ex-wife jokes. Do you yeah. appreciate mother-in-law jokes? Oh, good question. No. Okay. I think, Nicole, you might like Tim Allen's first stand-up special. <laughs> I'm at, Now that I'm thinking about it, I think you would because it's all those kinds of jokes. It's oh, like, no. uh, like never hug a naked man or something like that. Okay. I love that you know that, that you're familiar with his. Uh, but, okay. Because you might get boners at the same time. Yeah, and you would, it would hurt. You'd stab each other. Uh huh. Yeah, that's how hard my boners are when I kiss it. I mean, not kiss <laughs> when I kiss a sleeping naked man. <laughs> uh, I w- w- we were taught by Tim Allen's uncle, not uncle, his brother, 
Yeah. He was a like teacher at our I school. I wasn't. Oh, you weren't? Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, so like I was on the radar. Also, Tim Allen was such a big central point in our childhoods. Yeah. Because of, you know, like you have home improvement, but then things like Jungle to Jungle, Santa Claus, uh, yeah. Toy Story. He was just yeah. like thrown at us. Yeah. Which is weird, which is weird, right? Because you look at if you look at Tim Allen in a vacuum, I'd love to put him in a vacuum. Oh yeah. If, if you if you <laughs> just watch what get him body. really sticky and throw yeah. money at him. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, if you look at Tim Allen in a vacuum, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. It doesn't make sense why he was so big because he's he he's got a weird crooked face, and he's he has dad humor. There's no there's no like, he's not massively funny, and he's yeah. not handsome. You know, but he, he was the biggest thing for so long. I don't know. Because his... he was like the the every dad, you know? Yeah. Yeah, of that's what it was. He was an every man. That era. He's from my like my area. So oh, he was yeah. always big around here too. And it's very like it I don't know, maybe it's just because I know he's from the Midwest that I'm like, I feel like he just is like a Midwest energy. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. My dad didn't like him because he was a snitch. Because my dad also at one point was arrested for Drug dealing, yeah, and um, and he was like, you know what, Tim Allen, say what you will, but that guy was a snitch. That's he he put a lot of people in prison. He got a lot of people in trouble, and probably got some people killed. Oh, for sure, you know, and it's great. And then he's just then he's just on home improvement, and like loved, because everyone was doing drugs back then. Yeah. But he yeah. was caught with so many drugs. Oh, damn. Yeah. Because he was dealing my, it. My dad, he was caught he was caught with like uh like a couple pounds of weed in his car in like the late 70s. Damn, your dad sounds so cool. <laughs> and he's uh, you know, he was a, went on to be a carpet cleaner and had led a very boring life. But he was caught with all these drugs. The police said, "Hey, we um you're going to go to jail or you can do a sting operation for us with one of our agents. And so they got my dad and this cop who was undercover. He said the cop was a real dick and like kept on showing him his gun. Um, they pull up to this drug dealer's house. The drug dealer was selling heroin and they wanted to pin him. So they wired my dad up. When I learned this, my fucking mind was blown. They wired my dad up. Um, and he would not want me saying this. <laughs> I'd be able to be recorded. They wired my dad up. And they sent him into this drug, this drug den. And they said, you know, we want me to talk to him and, you know, get him to the, you know, show you drugs, talk about how he's selling heroin, yada, yada, yada. So my dad was never a bright guy. He got brighter with age, but was kind of always like a dumbass. He accepts every drug the guy gives him. My dad, he gets like weed, PCP. He smokes heroin with him. And the point where my dad is so high that he can't get any good information out of this guy. But it was enough to where there's on the mic, they got him like saying, hey, you want some of this? You want some of that? Some of this? So anyways, they get enough to kind of pin him, I think. I don't think it ever worked out totally. But they the the, the commander in chief or whatever, the, the chief of, of the uh, police station Brings my dad, who can barely open his eyes, into his office and goes, God damn it, Howell, you know, you were supposed to get this information and you're blind, you're, you're, you're fucked up, blah, blah, blah. And my dad's whole defense was like, hey, man, if I didn't do these drugs, he wouldn't, he'd know I was a rat. He'd know I had a wire. Oh, yeah. And the guy was like, okay, I guess you have a point. <laughs> and my dad, and like, my dad was fine because he did what he was told to do. He'd like, he took the plea deal and he didn't serve any time. Hell yeah. Yeah. I'm like, that's crazy. Just what an idiot, like what a dumb thing for me. <laughs> In fr the cops, the cops are listening to you smoke heroin right now. It's insane. Real quick, Tim Allen's stand-up special was Men Are Pigs, but his book was Don't Stand Too Close to a Naked Man. Okay. Yeah. Which I read. Wow. 
Yeah, you, you read, read it? that? Yes, I read How that. How old were you? How were you? Must have been the young child. No, like fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Still. Because I was Hell really, I was into stand up, so I was like, "Yeah, I want to hear about this." Okay. And he's like, "Oh, uh, my ex wife." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why did uh, this? Must have did the lady pass out or something? Did Sally? Well, like, does she pass out? I don't. I don't remember her passing out. I thought she's a pretty tough broad through most of it. Uh, so she, she might. Montana. I I wrote she's down. Montana. <laughs> I wrote she's down the, that mountain air. I wrote down the girl's unconscious. So get over here and kiss her. Well, because she was asleep. <laughs> oh, okay. She slept again. No. Well, this is a late no. Maybe, maybe they she, just maybe regular kissed. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, she might. She might have. Maybe they saw the bird and she fainted. Yeah. It's like, you know, a 50s horror movie to not yeah. have a fainting woman. It's like, what remarkable. are you doing? Yeah, come yeah, on. Like, what are you doing here? I, in every Marvel movie, you, you get some quick quips. In every old 50s movie, there's a lady fainting. Exactly. In every Marvel movie, you get some weird, like, pseudo propaganda for the military industrial complex. And some funny jokes about 80s movies. Yeah. And a random old man. Oh, random. that's Stanley. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Rest in pizza. Rest in piss. I heard he's a bad dude, so maybe he should rest in piss. Uh, no, I have I heard like he was, he took credit where he shouldn't have taken credit in the early days, but then like uh, near his older age, it he, people were taking advantage of him. Uh, like when he was like an like a old man yeah. with nurses. Yeah. Yeah. I heard there's some elder abuse. Uh, you brought this up, but there were a lot of science words just strung together. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And when, so he blows himself up and they're like, oh no, he comes to it and he's like, I gotta go, I gotta go. And they're like, no, you just blew up. It's, it's not working like this and that. And he's like, no, wait, it blew up. That I that's what it needed to do, and I was testing it out myself. I knew it would work. I didn't want to wake you guys up, so I just tried it out. So yeah, I did it. And they're like, "Wait, you created the thing to make its antimatter shield go away?" Yeah, I did it. Let's get it into the plane. And these fuckers are saving the entire world, and they have the military behind them. Why are they their own roadies? They have to carry in yeah, all the equipment. Yeah. That maybe it's like, oh, I don't trust these uh, these privates over here. Yeah. Also, like the idea of like, I didn't want to wake you is bullshit because he loves kissing sleeping women. Oh, yeah. Well, no, because so that's if, they, if she wakes up, then she's no longer sleeping. You can't keep and kissing. It's not as, and it's not as hot, right? Yeah. Totally. Nicole, please just open mouth kiss me when I'm sleeping. <laughs> No. Are you afraid Jeez. that you, you'll be like, oh, no, this is my thing? <laughs> yeah. Also, they didn't have it set up, all of this equipment, before they took off. Because we're like, oh, well, yeah, we still have to, like, yeah, I, maneuver yeah. the, the transistors and get the radiation yeah. flowing. I think just, again... I think they were also trying to stretch time in the movie. They had to be. Oh, because yeah. Because of how short it was. That movie is suspiciously short. Uh -huh. And I'm sure that script was really short. Yeah. I um, think seven or I think 65 minutes was technically a feature back then. So yeah. th they might have contractually needed to do 75. I wouldn't be surprised. Also, I made a note of this. Uh, the, the, the scream that the bird does. Sounds eerily similar to like Homer Simpson's generic scream. Oh, you know, have you heard like that? You know that high pitched scream Homer does. Oh, the high yeah. pitched one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like if you listen to the bird, it sounds a lot like that. So once I made that note, every time I heard the bird, I'm like, this is a man screaming. It probably was just a man screaming. Oh yeah, it was very annoying. Repet like repeated sound. Like on uh, Critters Three, the critters when they scream, it was. Uh, not Joe Barbera, Will Hannah, because I was like, wait, that sounds exactly like Tom when he screams on Tom and Jerry. Oh. And it was, I was like, oh shit. Yeah, that's, that's him. Oh, I haven't seen Critters 3, but I do know that like that Tom scream. 
Yeah. That that like full throated like man's like from the lungs scream. Mm hmm. I love that. That's, that's the funniest scream. That's Mr. Will Hanna. Mm hmm. Oh, and then here was the intro. I actually had it written down. I it wasn't supposed I was like, I, I guess I'll do this thing about uh kissing sleeping ladies. We're here on Kaiju Lycon 2024 to salute the greatest, most honorable, hunkiest government employees out there, electronic engineers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's the movie. And that's the movie. Well, this episode ripped, guys. You got any last thoughts, fun. Nicole? Not really. Do you have any ghost or uh, alien questions you want to ask an expert over here? Oh, uh, I don't have any on spot right now. <laughs> I'll I'll ask one for you. Are ghosts real? Yes. Okay. Hell yeah. You've Whoa. seen one when you were at a bed and breakfast. I did. Okay. I didn't see one. I heard one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard one like the way that Scooby Doo hears a ghost, which is like, like he's going get out. No, he didn't, you know, it was like it just <laughs> it was just like a oh, oh yeah, Ew. like like not real, like insane, absolutely, very creepy. There were there's a lot of times when I will edit your guys' show like in the winter time at 6 a.m. in the morning and I'm just like it's freaking me out. I'm like, "Oh no. Yeah. Oh no, all these <laughs> ghosts and ghouls." I love that. Fantastic. Good to hear. And then That's all I could hope for. And then we get some Jeff the Killers thrown in. Yeah. That that yes. episode ruled. <laughs> and oh, fuck, what was the you guys did? What was the Zelda 64 one? Ben drowned. These are all creepy pastas. Yes. He's talking about. Yeah. Ben. Ben drowned. Um, uh, we do more. I haven't have. I haven't been having you edit the creepy pastas lately because we just do them in video form. So I just yeah. take them right into Premiere. Um, but we uh, we've got some more. Like we did one where um, uh, it was like a spinoff of Jeff the Killer. Okay. It was Nina the Killer. Oh yeah. And it was I like. It I've been like wanting written. you guys to do like the other spinoff ones. Yeah, it was like, um, uh, well, it's kind of like uh, written by like a thirteen-year-old girl that mm -hmm. was probably in real life obsessed with Jeff the Killer, um, and that one was hilarious. So bad. They're all so bad. I love the bad ones. I, there's I, good ones too, but I love the bad ones. I really want to write one called James the Killer, but like send it to you and you don't tell Mo that I wrote it. Because then it will eventually, like, the killer, like, is at a home that l appears to be, like, as I'm describing it, it's like, well, wait, Mo, this, like, it seems like this is Mo's house. And then there's, like, a lank, <laughs> like, a slender woman-esque lanky woman there. And then, like, it's oh. like, oh, no, this is, this seems like, wait. And then hopefully Mo will be like, wait, did you write this? And you're like, no, no. our editor James did. <laughs> You should do that. I would love that. That'd I'll be... do it. I'll do it. I'll get rip okay. roaring high and write it. <laughs> please, please. Because I think that's the only way I can tap into my, like, th how a teenager would write. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's the beautiful thing. But there was one thing that you said from the Ben Drowned one of, like, he was a scrub in this Deku nut or something. I was a something scrub. Yeah, it, I think I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I can't remember laugh if it was so hard because you guys <laughs> did not know Zelda stuff. So you're like, huh? Yeah, it was, it was, that was amazing. The best part was like, I didn't know Zelda very well. And then like him doing like this, this writer was not trying to write for a general audience. They were just, they were assuming that you were, you knew exactly mm -hmm. what they were talking about. It's like, I was just a mere Deku scrub. Yes. And I'm like, I'm like, what the hell? What the fuck? A Deku <laughs> scrub? And like, Google wasn't helping me. Google was like, do you mean scrub by, uh, what's that band? Like the scrub is uh, uh, TLC. From me. TLC. Yeah. I'm like, no, not scrub from TLC. Are you uh, sure it wasn't Deku Scrub? Yeah, Deku, I think it was Deku. Deku, Deku. Yeah, Deku. see, that's From what I'm talking about. My Hero Academia. No, no, no. This is way before My Hero okay. Academia. Yeah. Okay. And then it was Deku. Deku. Oh, well, there are Deku, Deku. There are Deku or Deku nuts, depending on how you say it, in Zelda. Okay. 
but them saying scrub though i'm like this well, feels like modern you, you want to know what I'm it was probably to... it was probably shrub it was probably shrub oh no no the... i i'll search my because i sent it to you of like when you said this line was so funny if <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, if yeah, i yeah. search scrub in okay. my my yahoo account it'll it'll pop up i bet Yep, uh, it it was the third scrub down. I was a, a Deku scrub in Clock Town when you said <laughs> that was so funny because you're like, Deku scrub? Clock Town, huh? <laughs> but like, it does make sense that he is, why it would be like, this is only for people who know this because he's technically asking people who played the game, yeah. uh, like what, yeah. what do you think is going on? So I'm True. relaying it to you guys. So he, it's, it's kind of makes sense, but yeah, man, I was a Deku scrub in clock town was so fucking funny. Yeah. So guys, been, the best thing about creepypastas too is if you read a creepypasta, go to the comments on creepypasta.com and you will see 14-year-olds today leaving comments being like, this was the scariest thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I love, it's like, it, it, the legend lives on. It's not just our generation. It's, it's, the kids are still reading them. Hell yeah. scared. I, we should mention this to uh, We Love Trash, Betsy Sadaro and Mano Agapian's podcast. They, like, once or twice a year will read creepypastas. We got to tell them, hey, check out the comments. Yeah, we'll just read the comments. We laugh our asses off reading these comments. Uh, yeah, guys, listen to According to an Idiot. It's such a great show. Yes, please. Please, we'd love to have you guys as listeners and if you like us check out our patreon can i plug is that okay yeah let, yeah let's do plugs yeah if you like us check us out on patreon at according to an idiot on at patreon it's, it's, our, <laughs> name, it's our name again on patreon nicole do you have anything to plug um yeah darlinghomebody.com where i sell all the stuff that i make um and follow Darling Homebody on social media. Hell yeah. Oh, wait. I think this is coming out possibly the week before Fan Expo. So if it is July 17th, 18th, God damn it, 16th, 17th, and 18th, uh, because I think this is coming out the Thursday before that. It's in August. Oh, it's in August. Oh, yeah. Do you want to know what guy's in August? It's coming up. <laughs> Fan Expo Chicago. Go watch us. We're tabling there and buy Go some watch wares. Us. Yeah, people watch <laughs> us. We're going to be doing weird shit. They'll be like, how come he's like eating? How come he's like scooping peanut butter out of a jar and just eating that? Because that's what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I think it's, oh, why is he just eating bagels that are covered in peanut butter? Because I think one year I did that. Yeah, the people love it. Yeah. Are you doing are you doing this like for like for an audience or just that's what you like to eat? That's what I like to eat. I'm just <laughs> okay, saying if good. you're people watching, technically it's for an audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yes, I will be selling stuff in <laughs> Artist Alley while James eats bagels or something. Maybe. I might be on another hyperfixation of food by then. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll probably just be, be eating like protein bars. Probably just hot dogs. I wish. Just loose hot dogs. You can't bring loose hot dogs <laughs> into there. They'll be like, hey, buy That's a hot weapon. dogs. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If it's hot no enough. No glizzies allowed. Yeah. Because kids love to do that, you know. Uh, yeah. Doctor Strange meme where he's flipping the coin, the coin, but it's a hot dog through yeah. his fingers. <laughs> I hate it. It's a real good one. The viewers knew, saw me doing it with my fingers. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had a glizzy in my fingers. Oh, also, the creepy pasta theme that I made for you guys, I think is one of the best themes I've ever made. So if you want to hear I one of the it. best things I've ever done, go check that out. Yeah, I, that, I love that. That was awesome. And hey, guys, if you, you're on Patreon for According to an Idiot, how about you head over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for $5 a month, you get exclusive content every single Friday. Death from above a Sam and Max podcast. Hell, Hell yeah. Um. MLM. 
the death to squid, not death to squids, death to death from above podcast, Sam and Max, uh, J- Jeremy and Mo were on there. Yes. Oh, that was I, fun. I don't know if I asked this on there. Whenever you edit Mo, do you ever, as Homer on that episode of The Simpsons, do you just go, Mo, Mo, <laughs> Mo? Because that's every single time I mix down their file, I'm just going, Mo, Mo, Mo. <laughs> we got to watch that episode and Double Dare after this, Nicole. No. But you get all of that. This month has been Pride in July, where we're doing nothing but Citizens of Townsville Z, a Powerpuff Girls Z podcast with all of my queer friends. Not all of them. I, I, it would need to be a lot more episodes because I got a lot of them, guys. <laughs> collect them like Pokemon. No. Humble I collect brag. them like friends. I, but I guess you like, do I collect friends? No, they just like, like they show up on my doorstep. They just show up. Them. Yeah. They're like, please, sir, uh, may I be your friend? I go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing that. It's been a blast. And if you're a $10 patron, you get monthly bonus exclusive content in the form right now and straight to Patreon where we're doing summer mockbusters. We're just reviewing the Asylum mockbusters. We've done Transmorphers and we've done Gacy House. They've been fun. And you get names shout out on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those starting with Steve F., Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z, The Waz, Orion, my Bickle brother in common law, Joshua, Jake, Steve Barnes, a sweet child of time, my mother, Lil Corey's BF, and now former roommate Shane that fed twitch.tv forward slash core winning it's Corwin also if you guys didn't know this movie's gay we released an episode bottoms just a few weeks ago Nicole's on that episode it's a return it's our first episode in three years will we do another this year probably not but (laughs) maybe I don't know and next up we have from the ROM complex, as well as formulaic, a podcast and script writing, it's twitch.tv forward slash R2 Shelby 2. And finally, we have Zinny D from Speed Radio, a Sonic podcast. You better believe they're going to be talking about Shadow the Hedgehog with a gun. <laughs> and I've been James. I'm Nicole. And I'm Jeremy. And we've been Mostly, Mostly Speaking, speaking Sentai. Sentai. Bye-bye. Hi guys.